Nannying for someone as rich and famous as Kim Kardashian may seem like a dream job, but actually, it's serious business. Lots of rules, lots of pressure. So what is life really like for Kim's nannies? North tried to bite my nanny. Number one, it's a long-term commitment. Being Kim's nanny isn't a temporary job that you can quit in a couple of months. Kim wants the people she hires to be with her family for the long haul. Unlike Courtney. Last year, the sisters clashed after Courtney allegedly yelled at Kim's nanny in public for something she said to Rain. The nanny told Kim she felt degraded, so Kim confronted Courtney. When Courtney replied that the nanny would no longer be allowed around her kids, Courtney, you can't even keep a nanny. It's a clear reference to Courtney's nanny quitting after getting scratched by daughter Penelope in 2019. Penelope scratched her face. Obviously, Kim and Courtney's approach to nannies is totally different. A source told People that Kim's nannies have worked for her for a long time, and she treats them like family. Number 2. The Audition Nannies who work for Kim need to go through an intense vetting process. These are the Kardashians, after all. They're not just going to let anyone into their inner circle. Potential nannies are given a background check before sitting through multiple interviews with an agency. Once a couple of nannies get past this round, they're finally brought in to meet Kim and her children. This is their audition. And it's not just to see how the nanny gets along with Kim and her children. It's also held to examine the candidate's personality, intelligence, and how they present themselves. Only the very best will get the job. Number 3. No reality show appearances If you think becoming Kim's nanny is a shortcut to reality TV fame, think again. Nannies aren't actually allowed to appear on Keeping Up With The Kardashians or The Kardashians. If viewers ever do spot a nanny, their faces are either cut out of the shot or completely blurred. That's because Kim doesn't want her nannies to have ulterior motives. They're there to help take care of North, Chicago, Saint, and Somme, not to become celebrities or influencers. Strict? For sure. But it makes total sense. The kids' well-being and safety are the number one priority. Number 4. Totally confidential. If you love to gossip about work, maybe being Kim's nanny isn't for you. Like the reality show's behind-the-scenes production crew and every single person on Kim's staff, nannies are required to sign non-disclosure agreements before they get hired. And it's not just because Kim doesn't want unflattering stories or family secrets leaking to the press. It's also about her and her children's safety. Number 5. Salary If you're still interested in becoming Kim's nanny, you'll probably want to know how much they get paid. Back in 2018, it was reported that Kim and Kanye paid each of their nannies $100,000 every year. And they have at least four nannies, one for each kid. And while that may seem like a lot of money for childcare, it's actually not that much when you know that, together, Kim and Kanye are worth billions of dollars. But the couple know that paying their staff well means hard work and loyalty, so it makes sense that the nannies are getting a six-figure salary. Number 6. Be Flawless no one's perfect, but Kim's nannies are expected to be as close as humanly possible. Kim is a busy superstar and business mogul, and nannies are expected to fit in like a well-oiled machine. It's said that Kim's nannies must know every single detail about their boss and her schedule, so they don't get in the way. Nothing can be out of place for even a moment, and every single rule must be followed to a T. Kim runs a very tight ship. After all, billions of dollars are on the line. This is definitely a position for an expert multitasker who is adaptable, punctual, and possesses an obsessive attention to detail. Number 7. Don't Question Kim If you have issues with authority, maybe being Kim's nanny isn't a great fit, because they aren't allowed to question their boss, ever especially when it comes to her parenting choices. Even if the nanny doesn't agree with how Kim disciplines her children, their opinion is completely irrelevant. They're there to do their job and not cause any drama. Everything is completely controlled by Kim, and she even gives the nannies a 20-page manual full of rules that they need to follow. Don't even think about bending them. Number 8. Be fashionable, but not too hot Kim's nanny can't show up to work looking like a slob. They need to have a sense of style. After all, they're representing Kim and her brand, and they're putting together her kids' outfits every morning. However, it's a fine line. The nannies can't dress too glam or it would be distracting. The same thing goes for good looks. Back in 2018, when Kim and Kanye were still married, an insider told Radar Online that Kim deliberately hired nannies that weren't too attractive. Apparently, she was worried that Kanye would be tempted to pull an Affleck. The source said she is not going to make the same mistake as other Hollywood stars and won't let her marriage go the way of so many celebrity couples. Number 9. 
no photos. Kim is the master of social media selfie, but her nannies are not allowed to take any pictures while on the job, especially ones of the kids. North Saint Somme in Chicago are stars, and a photo of them is worth a ton of money when sold to a magazine or even on social media. Taking their pictures would be a violation of the family's privacy and mess with their strict social media strategy. Kim goes so far as to ban cell phones during work hours, and it's not just about photos. She believes that if nannies are on their phones, they won't be paying attention to taking care of her kids. Number 10. No jewelry. After Kim was robbed in Paris back in 2018, she suffered from paranoia and anxiety about her and her family's safety. Kim did a complete security overhaul and vowed to never flaunt her jewelry on social media ever again. Kim has broken her own rule a few times since then, but her nannies probably don't get the same pass. Like many celebrity nannies, they're not allowed to wear jewelry on the job. It might attract the wrong kind of attention. Again, Kim's number one priority is keeping her kids safe. Number 11. The Perks Yes, there are tons of rules, but there are also perks. The Kardashians are known for their generosity, and with all the clothes and shoes and bags Kim buys, there's a good chance that a nanny might find herself on the receiving end of a hand-me-down. There's also the possibility that they might get to meet other famous celebrities that Kim hangs out with, or at least see them from afar. Even though it's hard work, most jobs aren't as glamorous as working for Kim Kardashian. Number 12. Don't get too close to the family Kim may say she treats her nannies like family, but she values boundaries, and nannies cannot get too close with her or the kids. This means not intruding on private family matters, giving Kim her personal space, and knowing when to hold their tongue. After all, at the end of the day, these nannies are on the Kardashian payroll. Number 13. 100% Commitment and Flexibility just because Kim's nannies are expected to respect their boss's boundaries doesn't mean that Kim has to respect theirs. In fact, the nannies aren't allowed to have boundaries. They must be on call and ready to work at all times, 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. This isn't your typical 9 to 5 job where you get to clock out at the end of the day. Life moves fast and furious when you're a Kardashian. Kim could suddenly decide the family is jumping on a private jet to Thailand, and the nanny is just expected to go. Clearly, this is not a job for people who value their personal lives. Number 14. Working Vacations So yes, the nannies do get to tag along on lavish vacations, but remember, this isn't their vacation. It's Kim's. They're there to work and must take care of the children at all times. In fact, managing kids while on a trip is probably more stressful than staying at home, where there's a routine that everyone's familiar with. Sorry, nannies. You'll have to book your own vacay another time. Number 15. Must Love Cleaning like her sister Chloe, Kim Kardashian is obsessed with everything being totally organized, neat, and tidy. She once told Self Magazine, I'm the biggest neat freak at home, adding that she thinks she was a housekeeper in her last life. So Kim's nannies need to make sure they don't leave a mess. It's a lot harder than it sounds when you're dealing with kids, and everything in the house is white. Like I cleaned out the playroom today, like that kind of stuff gets me. Every relationship. Everything is there for a reason. Ever think it would be cool to work for Beyonce and Jay-Z? You won't believe what this family's nannies make. <laughs> <laughs> but Lord, I'm gonna have me a time. When Beyonce and Jay-Z welcomed their twins, Rumi and Sir, they officially became a family of five, along with their first daughter, Blue Ivy. So like any outnumbered parents, Bay and Jay got some full-time help. Less than a year later, Beyoncé was taking the main stage at Coachella, and the couple was releasing their collaboration album, Everything Is Love. How do they do it? With an army of nannies, of course. It's been great. I feel free. I feel very empowered, and I feel the happiest I've ever been in my life. After the twins entered the picture, Beyoncé and Jay-Z hired a total of eight nannies to help with the day-to-day -day chaos of taking care of three kids. Since the twins were on different sleeping schedules as babies, Beyoncé hired three nannies per baby, each working an eight-hour shift to care for Sir and Rumi. That means she had at least two nannies on the job, 24 hours a day. And since Blue Ivy was only five years old when she welcomed her little brother and sister, the couple also hired an additional two nannies to watch out for Blue. But that's not too bad, considering she also had three nannies when she was a baby. And if taking care of kids who are basically royalty sounds like a big job, don't worry. These nannies get paid. It was reported that Beyonce's nannies earned around $100,000 each the year the twins were born. Not to mention, the job comes with some major perks. 
After having the twins, Beyonce and Jay-Z purchased a massive Bel Air mansion worth nearly 90 million. The home is worthy of the king and queen of R&B, with not one, but four outdoor pools. A spa, basketball court, fitness center, and fortress-like safety, including bulletproof glass on all the windows. Anyone else thinking of quitting their day job to become a Hollywood nanny? But as you may have guessed, being a nanny for Beyonce and Jay-Z isn't all fun and games and six-figure salaries. The famous couple has a special handbook full of rules that all of their staff, especially the nannies, have to read and sign before starting their position in the Carter household. Before the twins were born, it was called the Daily Program for Blue Ivy as per Mrs. Carter, but it's likely been renamed since. All of the Carter's nannies have to follow the rules laid out in the handbook, and no, it's not optional. Here are some of the strict rules the nannies have to abide by. For starters, the nannies have to entertain the kids and be sure not to bother Mama Bay while she's doing her workout routine. The singer meditates in the mornings and works out up to three times per day with things like stationary cycling, cardio, and weightlifting. A big part of the singer's job is to stay in top shape so she can continue to wow audiences with her signature onstage dance moves. So there's absolutely no bothering her when she's working out. Beyonce also prefers nannies to be bilingual, preferably with a solid knowledge of French. In addition to French lessons, the nannies are responsible for teaching Blue and her siblings other extracurricular lessons like art history and some basic Swahili. Beyonce apparently wants her kids to speak multiple languages, which is always a big asset for anyone who wants to travel and explore the world. The nannies hired to take care of Blue Ivy also have to be alright with spending full days shopping. Beyonce's oldest daughter is becoming a huge fashionista. One of her nannies revealed that Blue has an affinity for high-end designers. Um, surprise, surprise. Blue likes Gucci, Lily Pulitzer, and Dolce & Gabbana, and enjoyed picking out outfits for her younger siblings as they were growing up. Another important requirement for the family's nannies is that they have to make the journey to New Orleans on a regular basis to bring the kids to visit Bay's family. Beyonce has a historic home in the heart of New Orleans, and her sister Solange Knowles also has a home there in the French Quarter with her family. In addition to being into shopping and languages, Blue, Sir, and Rumi's nannies must also have a love of the arts. Beyonce and Jay-Z are super into art collecting and appreciation of contemporary art. The nannies also take them to museums regularly, so they can take in the real-life versions of their art history lessons. And it seems to be working. At just six years old, Blue purchased her first pieces of collector's art at an auction for $19,000. She's since added multiple pieces to her collection, which is just a small part of her parents' extensive collection of art. Beyonce and Jay-Z own pieces by Carrie James Marshall, Kara Walker, Richard Prince, and Jean-Michel Basquiat. A fun fact is that not only is the family into expensive art, they also love supporting emerging artists. Beyonce has young, relatively unknown photographers snap her iconic maternity shoots and post baby pics. My biggest job in, in the world is to protect my daughter. Blue Ivy's nannies are also responsible for ensuring she's handed off safely to her security guards each day for school. Every day when Blue goes to school, she's accompanied by two cars and three bodyguards. In order to help keep the kids safe, the nannies are required to stay in shape. Keeping up with the Carters requires some strong physical fitness, not to mention maintaining the kids' busy schedules. Since training nannies for such a specific and high-stress job takes a long time, the family makes sure that everyone they're hiring is in great shape and able to keep up with the demands of the role. How do they stay in shape? One way was learning Beyonce's single ladies dance, which she supposedly requested they learn when Blue was a toddler since it was something silly that helped soothe her to sleep. Lastly, the pair's nannies have to be okay with traveling the world. Uh, who wouldn't be? Despite having an army of nannies on call 24-7, Beyonce and Jay-Z aren't the type of parents who leave it all up to the hired help. They spend plenty of quality time with the kids. Even though the performer often travels for work, her three kids come along on tour and even hang out backstage. Of course, she also takes the nannies and personal assistants along to help out. On top of all those requirements for the nanny position, Beyonce's hired childcare helpers also have to make sure the three kids are adhering to the many rules set by their parents. Besides the perks of traveling with their parents on tour, Blue, Rumi, and Sir have some strict rules they have to follow, probably even more than most normal kids. The kids have to live with full-on security detail at all times. They have to practice their language lessons daily, and they also have to attend extra classes in addition to their school schedules. 
Beyonce revealed that she hired her kids a confidence coach to help with their self-esteem. And of course, there's all that pressure to live up to their parents' mega fortunes. She led me by example. I always admired her. Luckily, Beyonce has already trademarked her kids' names, so they can venture into either the music or fashion industry when they're older, or even start a line of fragrances, hair care, or cosmetics. There's no limit to what the Carter kids can do. As for the nannies, although that sounds like a lot of pressure, rules, and requirements for joining the Carter household as a nanny, the perks and ability to see behind the scenes at not only the pair's concerts but everyday regular lives as well is well worth the effort of staying in shape and keeping up with some French lessons, wouldn't you say so? The kids' nannies aren't the only ones who have to read and sign the handbook. The kids also have assistants and a personal chef. Yep, Blue has her own personal chef, which her parents say is necessary since she's described as a picky eater. Her chef once revealed that as a youngster, Blue's favorite dish was whole wheat pasta shaped like ballet dancers and pureed asparagus. Sounds delish! No matter how much help they accept with raising their kids, Beyonce said that she always makes it a priority to spend time with her three little ones. As a new mother of two, Kylie Jenner needs all the help she can get. But even with so many family members ready to help out, this business mogul needs some professional childcare on hand too. We have to wonder, do Kylie's fans know the real truth about her nannies? Rise and shine. How many nannies Kylie has? While some of us may have trouble keeping up with these busy celeb moms, their nannies are up for the challenge. After Kylie Jenner's first baby was born, she brought in some backup. Four backups, to be exact. When Stormy Webster was born in 2018, the Kylie Cosmetics creator wasn't sure she wanted to have nannies in the house at all. The star planned on only having her mom, Kris Jenner, helping with the baby. She was worried about too many new people being around the house. Mama, mama. But Kylie soon realized that she'd need the extra hands and hired four nannies to help her take care of her brand new bundle of joy. Since Kylie is usually busy running her many businesses and Travis Scott is often traveling and working on his music career, it makes sense that these parents need some help with the kids. Daddy sing? Oh, you want daddy singing? I'm not good enough? Kylie hired the four nannies to work in alternating shifts so that Stormy would have someone around at all times. What? Thank you! Those movements? Rules for the nanny. But becoming part of the Kardashian inner circle is just about as hard as you'd expect. Along with a standard non-disclosure and confidentiality agreement, Kylie and her sister's nannies have to undergo an extensive background check to make sure they're up to the Car Jenner standards of, you know, morals and ethics. Kylie also had her nannies for Stormy and baby Wolf Webster audition for the family to make sure everyone gets along and approves of her childcare choices. But it's not just a clean criminal record that Kylie's looking for. The star also ensures that her nannies can keep up with the family's travel, activities, fame, and fashion. That's right, it's not enough to be level-headed and good with kids. These nannies also have to have a great sense of style. In addition, Kylie's hired help has to follow the general Car Jenner nanny rules, which include things like not wearing jewelry while on the job and being available for last minute trips and events. Sometimes that means coming along to watch the kids while Kylie and her siblings or team work. And sometimes it means staying home with Stormy and the new baby while Kylie takes much needed trips with friends or her sisters. This busy mom needs some days off from time to time too. The nannies also follow strict rules that prohibit them from taking photos of the kids. Kylie even makes sure that the nannies and everyone else check their phones at the door to ensure no unwanted pictures of herself or the kids are leaked to the press. For the first few weeks of Stormy's life, Kylie wasn't planning on sharing any photos of her daughter. Instead, she was sharing some sweet tweets about the baby for fans. One of her first messages replied to a fan's question about how Stormy was doing, read, She's good. Still staring at her all day. She looks just like me when I was a baby. Of course, she soon caved and shared plenty of adorable Stormy pics. What happened? You can come. Even with so many hoops to jump through, Kylie makes the job worth it with a decent paycheck for her nannies. After her Kylie Cosmetics, skincare, swimwear, and baby lines hit it big in sales, Kylie became a billionaire before hitting 24 years old and earned her way into owning one of the top selling cosmetic lines in the world. So I'm launching with a new collection really soon. That said, we can't know for certain how much the Jenner household's nannies get paid, but we'd hope it's a good balance against all that extra stress that 
comes with taking care of famous kids. Even after Stormy got a bit older, Kylie maintained a high level of security for her home. The nannies and everyone else working in the mansion were required to go through gated security every time they enter. Even Kylie has to buzz in when she gets home from a busy day at the office. The star shared a funny incident via Snapchat about her guards not recognizing her voice through the intercom. She said, So I just pulled up to my gate and I was like, you know, the normal routine. The star spoke into her intercom saying, Hey, it's Kylie Jenner. But the security guard answered, You're with Kylie Jenner? To which the makeup mogul responded, No, it's THE Kylie Jenner. Oops, at least she knows her security is tight. Of course, even the nannies of the busy Kylie Jenner get some vacation days. Kylie admitted in her interview with Harper's Bazaar that sometimes she likes to send the nannies home and spend quality one-on-one -on -one time with Stormy, while also getting a break from her business. She said, Sometimes I take some time off, let the nannies take days off, and hang out at home with Stormy. Kylie added that during those chill days, she likes to lay in bed with a movie and forget about the world. I'm on my beach. I'm on my beach. Kylie's Rules for Stormy Once Kylie's nannies make it through the vetting process, they're filled in on all of the mom of two's rules for her toddler and newborn. Sure, Stormy lives a life of insane wealth, privilege, and fame, but this kid still has some rules she has to follow. When Stormy was first born, Kylie was super protective of her daughter's safety and health. She made everyone sanitize their hands, and family members were only allowed to visit Stormy inside the house. The baby wasn't allowed out for weeks. Even before a pandemic was a commonly used word, Kylie had everyone who entered her house wear surgical masks while being around Stormy. More recently, Stormy has even more rules. For starters, the toddler is restricted from watching the family's reality show Keeping Up With The Kardashians until she's much older. Travis Scott agrees, and the rapper stated, Today, kids are on iPads. There's so much technology, they don't play outside anymore. With Stormy, no TV. That TV stuff is out. Besides that, Kylie continues to monitor and approve any pictures of Stormy that are released to the public and is still a bit of a germ freak about her house being clean and safe for the kids. After giving birth to Stormy, Kylie was so strict about keeping the house clean and germ free that she restricted gifts from her family to flowers only. That resulted in rooms full of gorgeous bouquets. Will the star keep the same rule for baby number two? Who's the cutest baby? Me, me. Wolf Webster Rules Now that Kylie and Travis have welcomed their second child, will little Wolf Webster have to follow all the same rules as his big sister? As we've seen with the other Car Jenner siblings, rules can change as their households, businesses, and lifestyles continue to expand. Fans are wondering if Kylie will be taking some time off from her business endeavors to care for Wolf, or if her team of nannies will be immediately on the job to help out with the growing family. That could mean that a new nanny position will be opening up. Do you have what it takes to nanny for Kylie Jenner and Travis Scott? Oh my goodness, you and Mark from sleeping. You were sleeping good. Kylie's nanny rules versus her sisters. Kylie's household runs pretty similar to her sister Kim's. Kim Kardashian has nothing against hiring help and also relies on regular, around the clock childcare for her four kids. Unlike Kylie, who usually has one nanny working at a time, Kim actually has four nannies steadily on the go. One for each kid. So much for being outnumbered. The KKW Beauty creator makes sure that each kid has eyes on them at all times. Courtney also has a team of nannies, with at least one assigned to each child. A big difference between Courtney and her sisters, however, is that for all three of her kids, she decided not to have a nanny's help for the first few months after each baby was born, getting that exclusive mother-baby time in early. Kylie might not follow all the same rules that her sisters do with their kids and nannies, but these siblings still have each other's backs when it comes to raising their kids. That's how it is with so many little ones around. As Aunt Kendall Jenner rightfully put it, every time I think think it's eased up, someone's popping out a baby. Kris Jenner, who's known to her 11 grandkids as Lovey, is also known to swoop in as super grandma and help out when needed. With so many kids and so many grandkids, it's a lot. Kylie's parenting style. Since she kept her first pregnancy private from the public until the birth, some fans think that Kylie brought down an even heavier hammer of fame on her firstborn. Your pregnancy has been the best kept secret of our generation. By keeping Stormy a secret for so long, Kylie only intensified the public's interest in photos and info on Stormy's life. Now, Kylie is doing her best to teach Stormy about fame and how to stay humble in the public eye. She told Harper's Bazaar, I'm just trying my best, even though she's still little, 
to remind her how blessed we are and that this isn't normal, the way we live. Kylie also later defended her decision to keep the pregnancy under wraps, explaining that since she shares a lot of her life on TV and social media, it's important to keep some things private for her own well-being and mental health. Like, I'm not trying to keep the secret, I'm really doing this for myself." On the subject of fame, Kylie added that she doesn't teach Stormy to hide from the cameras, but instead to embrace her platform while guarding her privacy when need be. Keep the camera on. Okay, I'm looking at the camera. She said, "...it's just our life. People want to take pictures." And as for having kids young, to each their own. Kris Jenner defended Kylie's choice to have kids at such a young age, saying, "...I think she was just born to have kids. I felt like I was the same way. I wanted to have a baby when I was 16 years old. I thought about how many kids I would have. So, I think that some people are just… when you know, you know." Kylie may have been a young first-time mom, but this time around, she's got the experience, not to mention plenty of help from her family and her army of nannies and assistants. It's easy to focus on the members of the royal family, but there are a ton of other people who support them in their endeavors. While everyone loves to catch a glimpse of the royal children, we usually don't see the legion of nannies tasked with their care. You'll be shocked by some of the strict requirements royal nannies must adhere to. But first, make sure to click subscribe for more from the taco. Let's get on to that list of royal requirements. Martial Arts there are a ton of people who keep the various estates of the royal family running. Everyone knows that each member of the royal family has their own security force that travel everywhere with them, even on vacation. Of course, this includes all of the royal children and their security force accompanies them to school each and every day. But this isn't enough for the royal family, and they also require their nannies to be willing and able to defend their children if worse comes to worse. Simply being able to calm a tantrum or cook lunch isn't enough for these nannies, who must be trained in martial arts. When when applying for most jobs, fighting skills isn't something you need to include on your resume, but it is in this case. This may seem over the top, but kidnapping is a real danger for members of the royal family. A man was once caught breaking into the school of Little Prince George, although thankfully nobody was harmed. There was also the case of Ian Ball who tried to kidnap Princess Anne, the only daughter of Queen Elizabeth. Being a nanny is never an easy job, but in this case, it can be downright dangerous. Driving. Although thankfully such events are few and far between, things like kidnapping are a constant fear for members of the royal family. In addition to being able to utilize self-defense to take down a kidnapper, nannies need to be able to make a quick getaway in a motor vehicle. Having a driver's license seems like a basic requirement to be a nanny, but this simply isn't enough in this case. Nannies are required to take extensive driving classes. Some of the techniques they use are useful in everyday situations, such as dealing with inclement weather. Now that we think about it, it's a shame more people aren't required to learn how to properly drive in the rain or snow. But beyond that, these nannies are trained in driving skills more suitable for stunt people than childcare providers. In a situation where they're behind the wheel and someone is in pursuit, nannies need to be able to get their royal charges to safety. They learn how to drive evasively in case they need to lose a pursuer, which also works well when they're dodging photographers. Having a basic driver's license just doesn't cut it in this case. Education by now, you might be wondering just how one becomes qualified to nanny for the royal family. It requires no shortage of training, and such nannies are in high demand. Fats Norland College is considered to be the pinnacle in nanny training, and their graduates are in demand by wealthy and powerful families all over the world. The school has been around since 1892, and Maria Teresa Turian Borello, the nanny of Prince George, is a graduate. According to the school, her skills are about average for what they expect of their students. In recent years, the school has been forced to more than double its classroom size in order to meet the growing demand for their graduates. Norlin Vice President Mandy Donaldson claims there are about six jobs available for every one graduate. Upon successfully completing the program, they have obtained a three-year Bachelor of Arts degree in Early Years Development and Learning, which is validated by the University of Gloucestershire. The school costs over $18,000 per year to attend, which doesn't include room and board. Among the various skills they learn during their time at Norlin, students are expected to gain an understanding of the social and emotional development of children. Uniform School uniforms can be a controversial subject, but they're not up for debate at Norlin College. Nannies in training are expected to suit up whenever they're on campus and when traveling to and from the school. These uniforms have been around for 125 years, and there is a male and a female version. Female students wear a brown felt hat, a brown dress, and a brown shrug. 
In the summer, this uniform will also consist of light tights and white gloves, but in the winter, it will have dark tights, brown gloves, and a jacket. Male students, on the other hand, wear a jacket, shirt, tie, and pants all year round. A single pair of stud earrings may be worn, but no other body jewelry or watches. Putting on the uniform means you're on duty, and students are forbidden from wearing it while chewing gum, listening to headphones, using a phone while walking, or buying alcohol. For a long period of time, nannies in the royal family were required to wear this uniform while on duty. However, it's now up to the discretion of their employers, and many progressive royal family members choose to let their nannies wear regular clothing. Nutrition in addition to learning martial arts and evasive driving maneuvers, nannies are also trained in much more mundane yet sensible tasks. They're required to take courses in nutrition so they can provide their clients with healthy, balanced meals. Royal nannies learn how to best support their families when they are breast or bottle feeding and then eventually start preparing meals. Of course, there are royal chefs at the family's disposal, and the nanny will often work closely with them in order to plan suitable and healthy meals for the children. Sure, the parents will have some say in the menu, but they will primarily rely on the expertise of the nanny. Not only do nannies need to make sure meals are healthy, but they're trained to take various medical needs and allergies into account. In school, they also study the impact of cultural influence on diet, so they can create a proper menu. As we all know, in the royal family, few things are as important as remaining proper. They need to be prepared to cook up anything the family could require, from a quick snack to a full party spread. Discretion no small part of any nanny's job is keeping the children safe, but as we all know, the royal family faces extra challenges that the average household doesn't have to deal with. Paparazzi are always out and about trying to take photos of the royal family, so nannies learn how to best evade them while driving and keeping the kids hidden in the back seat. Confidentiality and privacy are huge deals for the royal family, so a nanny must be an expert when it comes to discretion. The royal family has been rocked by scandals before, such as when the book The Little Princess is, the story of the queen's child by her nanny came out in 1950. It was written by former nanny Marion Crawford and talked about what it was like raising Queen Elizabeth and her sister Princess Margaret. The book caused a massive scandal and now nannies are expected to sign strict confidentiality agreements. While attending Norland, nannies also learn about cybersecurity and how to stay safe online. Members of the royal family aren't allowed to have personal social media accounts and their nannies generally follow this rule as well. Before being hired, a royal nanny's online activity will be highly scrutinized scrutinized. Kidnapping as we mentioned earlier, kidnapping is a serious threat to members of the royal family. Nannies need to train in self-defense and strategic driving maneuvers, but the requirements go far beyond that. Even adult members of the royal family are at risk of being abducted and are forced to undergo special training. When Meghan Markle joined the royal family, she was trained in what to do if she ever found herself in a hostile situation. This includes a fake kidnapping and rescue situation involving live ammunition. It sounds terrifying, but supposedly it's important to learn what live gunfire sounds like in case you're ever in such a situation. All members of the royal family are expected to go through this training exercise, and so are their nannies. They need to be able to work through worst-case scenarios, which can't be escaped by a clever driving maneuver. Instead, these sessions focus on building a relationship with potential kidnappers and trying to stay alive until help arrives. Security training is just one of the many things the royal family takes seriously, and we don't blame them one bit. Being a nanny for a member of the royal family can be a potentially dangerous position. Dedication being a nanny for the royal family is a prestigious and important assignment. Because nannies are trained to put the needs of their clients first, their own personal lives typically end up taking a backseat. In general, the royal family prefers to hire nannies who do not have their own families. This makes it easier for the nanny to dedicate his or her time to their job. Maria Teresa Turian Borallo graduated from Norland College over 20 years ago and has nannied for many high-profile families since then, including the Duke and Duchess of Cambridge. Borallo realizes the importance of giving her all to the family she works for, and you can sometimes spot her wearing the traditional Norland uniform while caring for the children. It's expected that your work will always come first when you're a nanny for the royal, and this is something many struggle with. Although it can be an enjoyable and lucrative position, many nannies end up quitting when they realize it's almost impossible to strike a good work-life balance. But at least the job pays well, with top-earning Norland College graduates earning nearly $100,000 per year. Support 
Becoming a nanny for the royal family means going through a ton of training beforehand. But even those who attend the most prestigious of schools still have a lot to learn. Each family is different, and a new nanny will need to learn to adapt to their needs. After all, there is no one-size-fits-all method of caring for children, whether you're a parent or a nanny. Royal nannies need to learn to adapt to the needs of a growing family, and high-profile families have very specific needs. Because of this, Norland nannies are required to stay in contact with their alma mater even after graduation. The school generally supervises their nannies who go on to be placed with high-profile families for a period of time. Unlike average nannies, those working for the royal family typically spend more alone time working with just the children. Their parents travel and work frequently, and this means an additional level of care is required. Just as Norland supports its nannies, the nannies must then support their royal clients. The nannies will also need to be able to integrate themselves with the other members of the household staff in order to provide the highest level of care possible. Manners Members of the royal family have no shortage of rules they need to learn to follow. Most families value good manners, but they're absolutely required in the royal family. In addition to the normal please and thank you rules of etiquette, there are tons of special rules specific to the royal family. Although they're employees and not members of the royal family, nannies need to be aware of all of these rules and regulations in order to properly teach their young charges. After all, the way the children behave will be considered a reflection of the way they're being cared for. And in the royal family, there is zero tolerance for poor manners. Children in the royal family aren't allowed to sit with the adults at formal dinners because their conversation skills aren't yet up to snuff. They need to learn to be perfectly polite and contribute to the conversation before they can graduate from the kids' table. If royal kids aren't even allowed to sit at the proper dinner table until they can behave, you know there is no room for error when it comes to having impeccable manners. Nannies need to be able to behave perfectly proper themselves so they can teach royal children how to fit into polite society. Keeping up with the Kardashian takes on a whole new meaning for the family's hired help. You guys, I don't have a nanny anymore. What? Today we'll be investigating the lives of their nannies and we'll uncover the fine print in their job description. The audition process. To become a part of the Kardashian's inner circle, you have to do a lot more than just handing in your resume. Before anything, the nannies have to get an extensive background check to make sure they don't end up with a Fran Drescher type who falls in love with the head of the house. After multiple rounds of interviews of being strictly vetted, the chosen few candidates must undergo an audition in front of the family to make sure they're the right fit. They are evaluated for their personality, intelligence, and even sense of style. If they make it through this, it's just the beginning of the challenges they must face. The kids must be dressed to impress. As we all know, getting a kid ready in the morning is a challenge, but for the children of the Kardashian family, it's on a whole new level. Not only do the children have to be well-groomed and put together, they also have to be wearing the latest brands and trends to upkeep their fashion icon status. Because the parents are often releasing new lines of clothing, the kids act as little walking advertisements. On top of that, the girls often look like miniature copies of their mothers, so the nanny must take into account that they're also striving to dress a fleet of mini-me's. By signing on to this job, they're also signing on to be part-time stylists. They can't wear jewelry. In 2016, Kim experienced a traumatic experience that would change her life forever. While visiting Paris, her sisters went out for a night on the town and she decided to spend the night alone in her hotel. And then I saw two guys holding another guy down. They tied her up with plastic cables, taped her hands and legs, and robbed her of her diamond ring and other expensive jewelry. In total, she said they took around $5 million worth of her items. Ever since the traumatic experience, she has been cautious about flaunting her riches, and as a result, when her nannies are on the job, she instructs them not to wear jewelry should they become a target. All work, no play. As soon as the nannies sign their contracts, they are basically signing up to live a life where total availability is paramount and freedom is non-existent. There is no steady schedule and therefore they must be prepared to drop everything last minute should they be needed. If they've got plans, tough luck. The Kardashians come first. No photos, please. For a family that is so heavily photographed, you might be surprised to hear that the nannies themselves are strictly forbidden to take photos of the children. No pictures! If they had any unsightly pictures on their phone and it was leaked to the press, they could have a field day. Say a child was acting out or there was a video of one of the parents scolding the kids and it was taken out of context, the media would eat it up and publish it on every gossip column they could get their hands on. Therefore, the parents make sure that they have complete control over who takes the photos and how they get used. Walk the walk. 
One of the strangest rules that Kim has for her entourage is that they must be instructed where to walk when they're in public. Imagine first getting the squad washed, dressed, and fed, and then told that while walking from point A to point B, you also have to make sure they stay in line. It truly sounds like something out of The Sound of Music. Rumor has it that she likes her squad to make a V formation behind her so that she can remain the center of attention at all times. Passion for Fashion while we know the kids have to look their best at all times, the nannies are no exception. Through all the chaos of juggling the family's wild schedules and wrangling the children, they must maintain a high standard of fashion and always be presentable. After all, while they're not center stage and getting all the attention, they still end up photographed by proxy and must represent the family at all times. Zip thy lip. While it may seem like we have total access to everything that happens in the lives of the Kardashians, what with them constantly posting on every social media platform imaginable, there is a lot going on behind the scenes that the family would rather the press didn't get their hands on. Therefore, before accepting the position, each nanny must sign a confidentiality agreement stating that they will keep their lips zipped. They must agree that anything they see, hear, or witness while working for the family stays within the mansion walls. Payment. Kylie Jenner is en route to becoming the youngest self-made billionaire ever. After launching her cosmetic line, she made a handsome $360 million in sales over the course of only one year. Her sister Kim is not doing too bad for herself either. It is estimated that after the success of her KKW beauty line, Kim's net worth equaled around $370 million. We can safely say that all five sisters are doing pretty okay for themselves and are sitting pretty with their accumulated wealth. So knowing this, you would assume that the nannies make a pretty penny working for these women, right? As it turns out, there has been some speculation over how much the hired help actually gets paid at the end of the day. After the Institute of Global Labor and Human Rights launched an investigation over the clothing lines K Dash, Shoe Dazzles, and the Kris Jenner collection and discovered that the workers were being paid less than 10 cents per garment, we're at the very least skeptical about the nanny's salaries. Be on call 24-7. As we know, to be a Kardashian nanny means having an unpredictable schedule, but it's actually worse than that. They must be available around the clock. If they're living in the house like any nanny, they have to be prepared to answer to the kids waking up at night, so therefore never get a truly restful sleep. Rise and shine. In the morning, they have to be up before anyone else rises so that they are prepared for what's to come. If they're off-site, they must have their phones on them at all times and be ready to go when it rings. Like a Boy Scout, they must always be prepared. Maintain distance. Although the nannies spend endless amounts of time with the children, they must be careful to remain a respectful distance to the family. The Kardashians value their personal space and privacy above all else and need to be seen as the boss. Although the nannies undoubtedly develop close personal relationships with the parents and their children, they have to be careful not to cross the line. They have to make sure that the kids don't favor them over their parents and must be aware that even though they have been accepted into their intimate space, it still doesn't mean that they're actually part of the family. At the end of the day, they're still employees, and the Kardashians won't let them forget it. Don't forget the pets. On top of attending to the children and their endless list of needs, the nannies are also in charge of pet care. This includes feeding, walking, and making sure they are well-groomed just in case Kylie needs a close-up with her Italian greyhound, Normie. Kim and Courtney have pups from the same litter which they gave to their daughters, making sure to keep everything in the family. Because the Kardashians seem to keep adding to their collection of furry friends, the nanny must be adaptable to this rotating cast of characters. While this must be a total handful, at least they don't have to take care of Kendall's snake. Keep up. Not only do the nannies have to change diapers and be a human snack bag, they also have to make sure the kids are well behaved during interviews, premieres, and photo shoots. There are countless highly broadcasted events that the children must attend, and it's up to the nannies to keep everyone in line. The family also hosts numerous glamorous parties, which takes all hands on deck. Whether it's their yearly Christmas soiree or a big budget baby shower, the Kardashians need someone who can keep up with the madness and be ready for anything. Strange requests. We all know that some of the Kardashian women have diva tendencies, which might mean the nannies have to cater to their every mood, but on top of that, they must be prepared for strange requests. Guys, I don't have a nanny anymore. What? It could be a late night food run of something highly specific and hard to find that one of the kids is craving, or it could mean using your arm as a testing palette for Kylie's new makeup. We know that on Kanye's writer, he has requests ranging from having Carmex chapstick to sun-kissed salted pistachios, so we can only imagine what he wants at home. 
During his St. Pablo tour, Kim posted a photo of alcohol-infused slushy machines in his dressing room. And we can only assume that his strange tastes and requests get even weirder in the privacy of his home. Be clean. If you're working for Kylie Jenner, you better be on your A-game. She is a known germaphobe, so the nannies must wash their hands frequently and make sure Stormy follows suit. Apparently, when her daughter was born, she had a very strict guest list of people who were allowed to visit. She was insistent that everyone around her was healthy as a horse to ensure Stormy wouldn't catch anything. We wouldn't be surprised if part of her nanny's uniform was wearing a utility belt prepped with hand sanitizer and wet wipes. Fly sky high. While at first it might seem glamorous to board a private jet and accompany the families on vacation, for the nannies, there is no relaxing getaway. Before the holiday begins, they must help everyone pack their multiple suitcases and double-check that nothing is missing. Unlike being at home where everything they might need is a call away, when abroad, they must be extra prepared and get the lay of the land just in case someone might need something they forgot at home. Though they get to travel to exotic places, they are the ones that must run the ship while the clan soaks up the sun. Be formal. If you think that working with the Kardashians will mean that you will become friends with your employers, think again. In an interview, an ex-nanny discussed her relationship with her old boss, Courtney, and revealed that she had to call her Madam at all times. She admitted that once she slipped up and Courtney threw a hissy fit. She must have learned to act this way by watching her mother treat the nanny similarly. Ex-nanny Pam Behan gave an interview talking about how it was working for Kris Jenner, and it revealed how strenuous it was for her shocking some of the things that they say and do. She talked of her uncontrollable temper and even recounted a story where Chris cussed her out for forgetting broccoli. It looks like the apple doesn't fall far from the tree. Be prepared to take the fall. To the Kardashians, reputation is everything. One wrong move and their names will be dragged all over Hollywood and back. When things go awry, often nannies are used as scapegoats and are blamed for things in order to take the heat off the family members. If a child is misbehaving and is photographed, the help will be held responsible so that no one accuses the Kardashians of bad parenting. Letting go. As any nanny experiences, it is extremely hard to help raise a child and then have to let go when the child has grown. Sure, they might eventually get a wedding invite down the line, but after putting their own life on hold and shaping the kid's life at the early stages, the nanny has an expiration date. They work day and night to shape the kids into the people they will become, but at the end of the day, they need to let go. No claim to fame. After all of this, you would think that the hired help would get some chance at seeing the spotlight, but this isn't the case. The Kardashians like to keep the help out of the frame, maybe to convince the audience that they are more capable of handling everything than they really are. We never see how much sweat and tears go into helping maintain the household and never truly know their struggle. That is, until now. Out of all of these rules, which do you think would be the hardest to follow? Was there anything we missed? Let us know in the comments below.